Well, hello, Shoreland and friends. Uh, this is your devotional for June 16th, and we are in Proverbs chapter 23, continuing to walk through the book of Proverbs and simply praying, God, help me grow in wisdom. So three insights from Proverbs chapter 23 for you today. Number one, love kids enough to discipline them. Love, and let me su suggest, love your own children enough to discipline them. Don't discipline someone else's kids, but love your own kids enough to discipline them. Listen to these words from chapter 23 of Proverbs, verses 13 and 14. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with a rod, they will not die. Punish them with a rod and save them from death. Now, some of you are freaking out right now. Punish them with a rod, that's child abuse. Okay, then put them in a timeout chair. <laughs> uh, take, take away a privilege. The point is not, this is ancient, this is, this is written thousands of years ago, but the point is this, if you love your kids, you will create boundaries. You will, you will discipline them. Discipline will not kill a kid. As a matter of fact, not disciplining a kid will consign them to death. Spiritual death, relational death, uh, death of wisdom. Uh, maybe it may even cost them their own lives. Parents who love their children will have clear discipline and follow through. I remember somebody who came to me and they, were not, they had never disciplined their child. And it, and it showed. Their child was on the edge of going into, into jail. And they talked to me about disciplining their child. The child did something else. They gave a clear guideline for what they were going to do, and they didn't follow through. Matter of fact, they put their child on restriction for a week to do chores around the house. The next day, I saw their kid out running around town. I said, oh, I, I thought you were on restriction. I talked to your mom about that. She said, well, my mom said I was, I was, it was good enough. I, 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 the, I called the mom and said, what are you doing? She said, well, he felt so sad about being on restriction. And I said to her, you're your son's worst enemy. She didn't like to hear that. Um, but I, I said, you, you are your son's worst enemy. If you love him, you will follow through on your discipline. She didn't like me after that, and, uh, and, and that was okay. I could live with that. But I want to say to you, love your kids enough to discipline. The Word of God is clear about that. Lesson number two, beware of addictions. Beware of addictions. We're going to look at verses 29 through 35. This paints an incredible picture. This is the addiction of alcoholism, the addiction of too much alcohol. Apply this to any addiction, but listen to these words. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it is sparkling in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake. It poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights. Your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the mast in the high seas. Look, look at that. Lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. And when you wake up, you will say, I will go to find another drink. What, what a story. What a picture. There's a point where, where alcohol crosses a line. The Bible doesn't teach that a Christian should never have a drink. I've had people try to convince me of that, or, and I said, well, teach me from the scriptures. They can't find it there. Jesus created wine at the wedding at Cana of Galilee, and it was better than the wine before. It wasn't grape juice. But the Bible talks about not getting drunk with wine. And Proverbs says a wise person is cautious. So if you enjoy something like wine, enjoy it in moderation. Don't be that person who says, look at all these things that have happened in my life. And they've happened because I lost my edge, I lost my wisdom, I lost my self-control because I had one, two, three too many drinks. And so there's an encouragement to be wise there. I encourage you to hear God's word. And then finally, jumping back to the beginning of chapter 23, the final insight. Uh, keep wealth in perspective. Keep your wealth, keep money in, your, in perspective. Verses 4 and 5 of Proverbs chapter 23. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Do not trust in your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches, and they're gone. For they will surely sprout wings and fly off into the sky like an eagle. <laughs> what a picture. So they, if you, it's all about my money, my cleverness. Look what I have. I got, I got the whole world under control. And all of a sudden, it sprouts wings and flies away. And you say, where'd it go? The one who will never leave you is Jesus. God's steadfast presence will always be what you need. Enjoy the things you have, but don't be possessed by your possessions. Don't fall in love with riches, because if you do, they could very well sprout wings 
and fly away. Lord Jesus, you have wisdom for us about, about how we deal with substances, ab about how we understand material things. And just about every part of life, we're learning from the book of Proverbs. Grow your wisdom in us. Speak your truth to us. Let us hear your wisdom and follow it and live in a way that honors you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this Sunday, we are in week three of our series, Big Prayers. We're focusing on John chapter 17. I encourage you to read John 17, the longest recorded prayer of Jesus in the Bible or anywhere. And it's powerful. And it's life impacting. It's world changing. So join us on Sunday at 8.30, 10 or 11.30. No need to register. And I need to let you know, starting this week, no masks required. There's, you don't need to wear a mask. Any, if you want to wear a mask, feel free. When you come on the campus, whether you're outdoors or indoors, you can say, I'd like open seating, which is seating, just normal seating like it used to be, or I need social distancing. We'll give you space. We have something for everybody online, on campus, but come and join us as we continue to talk about big prayers. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you on Sunday morning.